Hello and welcome back to another aircraft guide. Today we are taking a look at one of the most legendary aircraft in War Thunder. One of the most fun aircraft to fly and one of the most feared machines in the game. This is the Yakovlev Yak-90. And today I'm gonna tell you all about it. About the history, why this thing is so feared in the game and why it is one of the best fighters at its rank. So let's start with the history part right away. Now, when it comes to aircraft equipped with big guns, there are a few that come to mind. There are of course the obvious choices like the Henschel 129 and the B25G, both armed with 75mm guns. And then there are even more obscure ones like the Ki-102 with its 57mm gun. What all these aircraft have in common is that they were twin-engine designs used primarily for ground support. When it comes to single-engine fighters, the list is much shorter. Your mind will probably jump immediately to the Bell P-39, a single-engine fighter with a big low-velocity 37mm gun in its nose. However, there is another one. One that stands out in that its gun is not a low-velocity, low-recoil design, but rather featuring an accurate, high-velocity 37mm weapon, the Yakovlev Yak-9T. And now, uh, while a lot of other Soviet fighters uh, of the time had rather light armament, the standard being one or two heavy machine guns and a 20mm uh, weapon, the Soviets had developed several concepts for large caliber aircraft armaments, some having ridiculous sizes. For a time, they were obsessed with developing recoilless weapons for aircraft use, primarily for enabling single engine fighters to become deadly ground attackers. However, the limitations of these weapons were soon apparent. Some of them had to be single shot only because of their large caliber. They were difficult to aim because recoilless guns have a low muzzle velocity and despite being recoilless the effects of the gun firing still damaged the aircraft. It wasn't until Noodleman and Suranov presented their NS-37 gun in 1941 that a satisfactory aircraft cannon was found. The NS-37 drew up on the work of two previous designers who were fired from their design bureau and then prosecuted and executed because of, uh, well, Stalin. Um, and therefore, Nudelmann and Suranov were able to present and test the new gun in record time. The new weapon fired a massive 37x 198mm shell at an impressive 900m per second, with a max firing rate of 260 rounds per minute. The gun was belt fat and short recoil operated and fired both AP and HE rounds, making the gun suitable in the air-to-air -air as well as the air-to-ground role. The new gun directly com uh, competed with the uh, Spitalny SH-37 gun, a gun it would soon replace. The aircraft this gun was to be mated to was the Yakovlev Yak-9, part of the multi-role series of the Yak fighters designed by Alexander Yakovlev, the Yak-9 was developed from the earlier Yak-7 and would become the most widely produced fighter aircraft of the Soviet Union. Over 16,500 Yak-9s would be built overall. The basic Yak-9 airframe was adapted to fulfill several roles, making the Yak-9 one of the most versatile single-engine fighters of that period. It was used in the basic fighter role, as interceptor, as a ground attacker, reconnaissance aircraft and one variant even had a small bomb bay behind the cockpit. We also have uh, that in KM, it's the Yak 9B. The variant that would, however, receive the new gun was designated the Yak 9T, T for tank, as it was envisioned as a tank busting version. With its metal wing spar and improved structural um, integrity compared to the more flimsy Yak 1 and Yak 7, the Yak 9 was better suited to the new weapon. To make room for the new gun and to keep the center of gravity, the cockpit of the Yak-9 was moved some 40 centimeters to the rear. The tip of the gun still protruded uh, out of the prop hub, um, which is not surprising since the entire gun measured a ridiculous 3.4 meters, so this is not really a surprise, I mean just look at the thing. A single um, Berezin UBS machine gun would complement the uh, NS-37 gun. Powered by the Klimov uh, VK105PF of some 1200 horsepower, the Yak 9T managed a top speed of 597 km at altitude. Like most Soviet fighters, the engine was geared towards low altitude performance, something the Yak 9T as a tank buster would certainly profit from. The range of the new aircraft was 735 km per hour. 
Despite the increase in weight um, because of the gun weighing a massive 160 kilograms, the flight performance of the aircraft suffered little. While it was not as agile anymore in the vertical, turn performance was still very good at 18 seconds. The new type entered service early 1943 and soon was operated over the Eastern Front. It was soon found, however, that the Yak-90 had its limitations in its, in, its, in its intended role. While the gun had excellent ballistics in itself, hitting a tank at high speed still was very difficult, particularly for novice pilots. In general, Yak-90s were given to more senior and more experienced pilots. Furthermore, only the first one or two shots were really directly aimed. Since the gun had such a massive recoil that it would throw off the aim and the aircraft off balance, Therefore, pilots were instructed to fire only short bursts of fire. The ammo count was limited to 30 rounds, meaning accurate fire was of utmost importance to achieve effectiveness of the aircraft. The penetration, while good for a 37mm gun, was still not enough to penetrate the sides of German tanks at meaningful distance, and even the roof could only be penetrated at steep angles, requiring careful aim and nerves of steel since the Yak-9 wasn't really a dive bomber and had no air brakes like these aircraft. In its intended role, the Yak-90 was actually somewhat of a dud. However, where the aircraft proved itself extremely successful was in the air-to-air -air role instead. Its gun was able to fire HE shells, which thanks to their large amount of explosive filler were extremely de destructive. A single well-placed shot could blast even multi-engined aircraft out of the sky, and when a 37mm shell impacted a single-engine fighter, it would completely obliterate it. While still requiring careful aim and short bursts, the Yak-90 offered firepower never seen before on Russian aircraft, and um, their pilots used that to their advantage. German fighters used to engage the likely armed Yaks in frontal attacks. However, they got a nasty surprise when facing the Yak-90. Yak-90s would operate on the Eastern Front with success in both the air-to-air -air and uh, in some more, limit, more limited capacity in the air-to-ground wall until the war's end, with some 2,748 aircraft being produced. And that brings the history part of the Yak-9 T to an end. I'd say let's then look at the aircraft in the game. Now then, I spoke about the Yak-9 having attained a somewhat legendary status here in War Thunder, and that's for, um, for a pretty good reason. This 37mm NS-37 gun is just amazing. Back in the day when I started playing War Thunder in 2013, the Yak-90 was the to-go aircraft uh, for SEAL clubbing. It was, at that time, without a doubt, the most feared aircraft in the game, particularly in arcade. The gun could shred anything, and because you could reload mid-air in arcade, uh, you basically never really ran out of ammunition, which meant you could get absurd kill streaks with the Yak-90, and you can still do that today. In fact, we are do going to do something um, special in the gameplay part, and I will show you what this thing can do in arcade, actually. It really is a legendary aircraft. Anyone uh, you who, play who has played War Thunder for uh, a long time can tell you how feared this machine was back in the day. Of course, now it has uh, gotten more competition. For example, the ITP, there are more he um, heavy caliber cannon yaks like the Yak 9K, there's the Yak 9 UT, which can equip the 37mm gun. However, this thing here, this really is the OG uh, seal clubber, and it really is a special aircraft. I hold it very dear to my heart. Anyways, for the aircraft in the game, the Yak 9T sits at a battle rating of 4.0 in RRB and I think 3.7 in AB if I am not mistaken. Yes, it does. Um, it sits, of course, in the Yak tree at rank 3. It's the first uh, rank 3 Yak you can get and it's followed by its bigger brother, the Yak 9K. Although, let me tell you, you really want to fly the Yak 9T, not the Yak 9K, since, well, this thing can do everything the Yak 9K does but it's actually a bit better in my opinion, because the Yak-9K's 45mm gun is... meh. In terms of modifications, what you really want to get is... Um, it depends on where whether you want to use this thing mainly in arcade or RB. 
if you want to use it in RB, go for the performance mods first, um, and then immediately get the um, offensive belts because you really want to have the 37 millimeter air target belts uh, and the new 37 millimeter weapon. Since the aircraft is also usable in ground RB. Um, there's even more reason to go for the 47mm uh, offensive belts as soon as possible since with the uh, AP target belt, as you can see, it does have quite decent penetration and in ground RB this thing can actually quite can actually be quite a menace since it is able to destroy uh, even some of the heavy tanks from above. Now as for the aircraft's uh, costs, it is a very cheap to operate aircraft. Max repair cost is only 2,159 lions, which really isn't much. And let me tell you, this thing, this thing can be a, a really good money maker. I would actually recommend equipping a talisman to this thing because it really is a great aircraft. Um, as you can see, the burst mass is actually it is ridiculous. This thing has only two guns, and one of them is only a 12.7 millimeter machine gun and 4.03 kilograms. This really shows you how, how fast firing that 37 millimeter gun is. Speaking of the armament, not only the 37 millimeter gun hits hard, the 12.7 is also not that shabby. It actually is a pretty hard hitting 50 cal, not, uh, gotta be honest. Um, the aircraft is of course um, mainly made of wood. There is more metal in the machine than in other yaks. But still, your wings, the surfaces are mostly um, wood, which means the aircraft is, of course, uh, susceptible to, to fire damage. In terms of skins, you actually get quite a handful of them. The basic skin is this one. And fun fact, all of the decals you see on my Yak 9T skins are the ones I uh, equipped for the aircraft back in 2013 and I got this thing. I have never changed the decals. I kept them just as they were because I know this thing is just. It reminds me of on of a better time in War Thunder when there wasn't um when the new patch just wasn't full of just you know the latest fourth gen fighter or something like that. When there when it was about World War Two era aircraft, something I much prefer to the um, modern stuff they keep adding into War Thunder. Anyways, you get this skin on the Belarusian front. Yeah. You get it for 160 kills. There's this skin, which I personally don't like that much. You get it for 120 skins. There's of course this one that I'm that I am using, which is my favorite because I like the red nose and the uh, gray camouflage. You get that for 190 skins, and then there's lastly that one, which you get for 230. And, well, yeah, it looks like the other one before, I don't know why I should use that. But yeah, those are the skins you can unlock for this aircraft. Stat card wise, it actually is pretty accurate in terms of top speed and the turn time, it all seems well. Now then, that's it so far for the aircraft in game. I'd say let's head into a test flight and show you a little bit what this thing is all about. Now, as for the Yak 90's flight performance in game, this thing um, should be operated below 4000 meters. The engine, the VK105, is geared towards low altitude performance, which is not surprising since the aircraft was envisioned as a tank buster and dogfights on the Eastern Front took place below that altitude typically. Um, since most air battles in War Thunder take place um, at rather low altitude as well, this certainly benefits all of the Yak fighters. The Yak 9T is pretty decent despite the heavy gun in horizontal turning maneuvers. This is really the aircraft's strong suit. As you can see, the aircraft has a rather tight turning circle. It also has a pretty good roll rate. This certainly helps the aircraft in performing low level dogfights. Um, but because of the extra weight of the gun, and uh, in general the engine is not the most powerful at only 1200 horsepower, it is not that good for extended vertical maneuvers. You can certainly fly um, loops and stuff like that, but for extended periods of time or for hanging on the prop, 
Um, aircraft like the PG-409 certainly outclass the Yak fighters in that regard. Also, they are not very good boom and zoomers. Like all of the Yaks, the um, dive speed is not that impressive. It is slightly better, it feels slightly better than other Yaks because of the um, Yak-9 having the aluminum spar that is more sturdy than for example the Yak-1 or the Yak-7, but still don't go over 700 km per hour with this aircraft or you will rip your wings off. As you can see, I sh am already getting the reduced speed warning and the aircraft becomes increasingly difficult to pull out of a dive. Also, the roll rate uh, takes a significant hit. This is an aircraft that really likes to operate more um, at medium speeds between 4 to 500 km per hour. This is not um, a high speed dogfighter. However, the aircraft does keep its energy rather well. Um, you can certainly put the Yak-9 into a shallow dive and it will maintain a rather high speed which makes the aircraft suitable for uh, low-level pursuit interceptions. This is certainly something the Yak-9 can do, particularly when you go for enemy attacker aircraft. This thing really is the bane of these aircraft since with its big-ass gun it can blow them out of the sky with a single shot. Speaking of the gun, it is a very accurate weapon, 41st 3 to 4 shots. As you can see, they all land um, in a rather tight area. However, when you fire it again extendedly, you can see that it starts to scatter extremely. So limit your um, shots to three to four round bursts at max. That way, you can you can conserve ammunition um, and also assure that your shots hit the target ac as accurately as possible. You can also, of course, um, snipe with the weapon. It is um, certainly suitable for that. Of course, you can also uh, use the aircraft in the ground attack role, as we uh, just stated earlier. Uh, I would recommend, uh, I would recommend, it is basically mandatory to equip the uh, AP belts. I have to say, I have flown the Yak T in ground RB maybe once or twice. And because I don't play Gorn RB that much, um, it's certainly doable with the Yak and T to get ground kills with that. Um, but you really need to come in at a rather steep angle, like in real life, um, because you want to really penetrate the roof of enemy tanks. Of course, if you're facing light tanks like M18 Hellcats or stuff like that, then it doesn't really matter where you shoot them. But the penetration is good. But for side shots on heavier tanks, it's still not really possible. In any ways, you need to fly in rather close. And keep in mind, the aircraft does not have dive brakes. So you want to uh, come in with uh, your power maybe at 0%. zero, zero percent. So you just come, uh, you are basically gliding in, take a few shots, which gives you enough time to um, pull out of a dive before face planting into the ground. Now... Enemies you should be aware of are of course the BF-109s, they have similar performance in terms of maneuverability than you, but they are much better energy fighters than you. You are uh, faster than them at low at these low altitudes, you can certainly catch them, but um, BF-109s, it really depends on the player, it's a good player with BF-109 can certainly outfly a Yak-90, uh, particularly when they, when they use their flaps and slats, which is something the Yak-9 does not have. It does not have combat flaps, only landing flaps, and they rip rather uh, early. Don't deploy these below 300, uh, above 300 kilometers per hour. And it also doesn't get any slaps. So um, that base basic maneuverability you have here is what you get. So when you're dogfighting, um, you need to learn how to adjust your throttle to get the max out of your turn rate. Now other aircraft you should be wary of are... Um, the Spitfires and basically everything Japanese. Uh, the Japanese have uh, have some of the best, but they do they do have the best turn fighters in the game. Stuff like Zeros, Key Forty Threes, and Key Sixty Ones. You will find all of them at this BR range, and they will out turn you. And in case of the Key Sixty One, they will also out dive you. Um, so, if you want to engage these aircraft, engage them when you have the altitude and or the energy advantage. That way, you ca that way you can ensure that you get the kill on them and not the other way around. Always keep an eye out for aircraft above you. Again, the Yak-9 Skyway is not the best. Um, 
so you really want to um, play around that but it is certainly doable and uh, Diag 9 can deal with basically everything else it faces in horizontal turning maneuvers whether, uh, whether it's P-51s, P-47s and the like um, these aircraft are no problem for the Yak-9. Uh, the Yak-9 eats those things for breakfast. The aircraft certainly excels when engaging multi-engined aircraft. Um, bombers, ground attackers, stuff like ME-410s, BF-110s, any heavy bomber you encounter, they will be your priority target with this aircraft since you are um, able to destroy them with a single shot and you can destroy them at range. Uh, you can certainly, again, you can snipe with this aircraft and hit aircraft uh, from well over a kilometer away. I will demonstrate this in one of the uh, gameplays. Uh, there's one case I, I hit an aircraft at 1.4 kilometers away with this gun. It really is a very accurate weapon if you fire uh, if you fire a single shot. But yeah, those are your priorities, and only then do you go after any en uh, enemy uh, single engine fighters. It is much more difficult to hit single engine fighters because they are, of course, more maneuverable than bombers. But still, the gun has just such high mouth velocity that if you carefully aim, you should have no trouble operating the Yak-90 to its full potential. But yeah, that's about it for the Yak-90's performance in game. I'd say, let's show you some gameplay with this thing. So this is then our first presentation with the Yak-90 and we are here in what seems to be... I, f uh, I think we are... it's, it's, it's a 4-0 match? Ah, doesn't matter. The Yak-90 can certainly handle anything the enemy can throw at it. It's Yak-90, strong plane. Ah, yes, so we are against the Americans, the Swedish... Alright, okay, I need to be careful if they have um, Puramascus, because the Puramascus is one of those aircraft that can also threaten the Yak-9 in uh, horizontal maneuvers, or in general maneuverability, but uh, thank god that that's uh, actually a rather rare aircraft nowadays. Anyways, there is a Wyvern, very dangerous aircraft, maybe we can, oh yeah, come on. <laughs> okay, nailed him with one shot. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's the uh, first kill with the Yak-90. Hey, it only took me one one round of ammunition to get it. <laughs> so then, oh, okay. Let's try to evade the Mustang. See if he tries to follow the turn. He is. Quite a mistake there, buddy. He should have just gone straight ahead. Now I can sit on his 6 o'clock and get some shots and come on. Eh. Again, miss. Yeah, that, that should be. Yes. Critical hit. Should be going down soon. Oh, there's a whirlwind. Oh, shit. What's that? Oh, damn it. Another Mustang. Oh. Ah, took some hits. Team saved me there. Thank God. Ah. Well, anyways, let's get the. <laughs> <laughs> the dude just freaking exploded! <laughs> yeah, and that's what this aircraft's all about. <laughs> oh, nah, nah, I'm not going. Not gonna go for that. Not gonna. Not gonna be a kill stealer. But <laughs> that killing the world when that's what this aircraft's all about. We just making enemy aircraft go kaboom. <laughs> Oh yes, oh yes, this, it, it feels so satisfying getting kills with that big ass 37mm gun. But yeah, took some damage from the P-51, lost a flap, thank god the team saved me, I could have gotten in very bad ice. Uh, had a lapse of situa situational awareness at that moment, something that should not be happening, I don't like it when that happens, but we are still alive. Mm hmm so we have three kills to our name and I think there's only one enemy aircraft uh, uh, it's most likely a yeah, it's most likely a bomber 
So this could take a while before I am able to find him. Huh. Hmm. Can't see anything up to now. Let's just continue in the direction. I hate when that happens when you just have to search for the last enemy aircraft and it takes forever and nah. Oh well, it is what it is. Let's, let's see. We have three kills so far, so this is certainly uh, has been a, a decent match so far. Okay, let's watch our temperature. The aircraft is starting to overheat, but... Oh, there it is! It's a P-108! Well, you don't see these aircraft that often. Let's see, he does have a significant advantage, advantage in the altitude. Um, so, with the act that he's bad climb rate or mediocre climb rate, this could be tricky. Also, he's... Oh wait, is he descending? Okay. Eventually, we are able to uh, catch him. I mean, the Act is fast in the P108, and at some point, I will have been able to climb up to his altitude. But this will take forever, and the kit, the ticket counter, is going down rapidly. So, hmm. And I'm getting Yak 3 vibes here. Uh, you remember the last video of in the Yak 3 where I just managed to get in that last kill just in the nick of time? Oh god, I have a feeling this this could be another one of these matches. Uh, Cause this is... Yeah, the ticket count is not looking good. But he is, he is descending. He is trying to maintain his speed so that he can run away to his base, probably. If I time this correctly, I might be able to intercept him just in... Oh, the ticket count went down again. Oh my god, this is... Oof, this will be a really close match. This then depends on me, it seems. Oh, is there? Yep, I'm the only one with the firepower to take him down quickly. But he's yeah, he, he he's fast. He's coming in. Uh, might be able to snipe him. Line up the shot. Come on. Pew. Ah, almost. Pew pew pew. Damn it! Ah, he, he's engaging. Yeah, yeah. Yes, those Breda Zafat guns, they are dangerous. And, oh god, the ticket count is almost down. Oh, shh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Need to try to snipe this guy somehow. Oh, that was a close one. 11 rounds. Fuck it, just sh shoot him. No, <laughs> no way! <laughs> Snipe the guy from 1.4 kilometers away. Holy shit! Ticket count. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> oh my god. Yep. That's a win. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> So, and now for something different. Let's see what this thing is able to do in arcade. I am really excited because I haven't played arcade in months. Oh, this brings back so many memories. I love Domination Arcade. It's so cool. So much fun to fly. So many furballs and... Uh, um, again, you, you just... Like, arcade has a special place in my heart. Arcade is something... I flew arcades for so long and I, I was and hopefully I still am extremely good at it. Um, I played arcade for the longest time because I switched completely over to RB. And arcade is really great for honing your skills, particularly situational awareness. Because if you want to play com arcade competitively, which I do, um, then you really uh, need to have situational awareness. You really need to know what's going around you because otherwise you just die easily. 
But then again, just look how <laughs> the aircraft group performs. Like, arcade is basically everything performs at its best and then some. <laughs> but again, I'm lying the shot on the um, JU-88. And there's my first kill. Nailed him with the 37mm uh, gun. Easy peasy. Whew, let's quickly egress out of the area. There are a lot of aircraft around us. We don't want to engage in too many furballs. At least not yet. Okay, again. Oh, oh, that's an easy kill. Boom! With a single shot. Got the Spitfire. Oh, yes. I'm feeling right back in the saddle with that. <laughs> this is why I love Arcade. Oh, what's he gonna do? Oh, he's, he's going for the tanks. Oh, well, let's see. Another twin engine aircraft, B 18. Gonna have the shots. Short bursts only. Come on, critical hit. Boom, and he's down. Ah, only nine rounds remaining. Should I go for a reload? I don't know. But yeah, as you can see, arcade is really something else. But yeah, this is what I played for the first few years of WoW when I played WoW on the. And, and I had tremendous fun with the arcade. That's. And I do love RB, but. Sometimes you just gotta. You just just gotta go back to your roots. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's focus on the on the battle at hand. Oh, what? The, where did this, this where did this guy come from? Come on, can I get? Uh, fire! <laughs> ah, and nuked him out of the sky as well. <laughs> and yeah, you might now get um. A hang on why the Yak why the Yak 90 uh, was back in the day such an OP and feared aircraft. I'm already top of the leaderboard, <laughs> but I, I <laughs> I'm not, not I'm not wanting to quit yet. Let's see uh, let let's see how many kills I can get with this thing before I go down because eventually I am gonna go down. It's it, it's arcade. I mean. There are matches, I, I often do fly matches where I just don't get shot down, but it's really difficult to do to achieve that with all that's going on around you in arcade. But so far, this is this really feels back like 2013, 2014, when the Yak-90 really was the king of the sky in air arcade. <laughs> oh, there's a Yak-2. You don't see these aircraft much, uh, by the way. The Yak-2 is a rare aircraft in the sky of War Thunder. Didn't used to be that way. What's he gonna do? Ah, oh, okay. Nah. Guns of ammo, let's go for a reload. Oh. I'm not top of the leaderboard anymore. Alright. I've almost reloaded. Let's see if I can get the year. And he's on fire. Eh, this is arcade. Nobody cares about kill stealing in arcade. Arcade really is uh, just a free fall. And come on, critical hit. And aircraft destroyed. Ah, nailed my my cooling system. Not that it matters too much in arcade. I mean, pff, I just keep on flying. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I think the first hit I took, right? Damn. Yeah, K4 bomber. Five kills so far. Oh, like, oh, oh. And boom, he's down as well. PF110 dead. <laughs> this is like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> oh my god. I think I definitely, I, I, I'm definitely going to play more arcade in the future. I think. I mean, ah, this is this is this is giving me really so so much joy. Come on, next kill and boom, <laughs> back to the hangar for you. It is. <laughs> ah, great, and we are we are have we are um, in control of all three capture points. So that's good for us. An enemy act and he and he's in all sorts of trouble it seems. 
Uh, nailed that one as well. Oh my lord. Eight kills. Plenty more where that came from. <laughs> and now I turn into the crowd, the BF110. Yeah. God, I love this machine. The fridge launcher. Still as OP as it was back in 2013. <laughs> Come on, let me get that BF-110. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> B-39, okay. Okay, keep, oh, again, keep, keep uh, track of my surroundings. Ah. Ah. Maybe the Yak-3? Maybe the A-21? What's it gonna be? Uh, 821. J8. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, what this guy was doing here. Oh, holy hell. And now we're getting more and more into uh, the furball. That, that's usually a tactic I play in arcade. Uh, pick off single targets first and then, only then, when it starts dwindling down, then I go for um, get involved into the furballs. Unless, of course, I'm flying something like a zero. And. Uh, what? Can't surprise you survived that. Come on. Critical hit. Yep, got him. Ah, uh, uh, damn it. Ah, uh, my engine's dead. Fuck. Ah, uh, I think. Yeah, nah, okay. This is the. Ah, uh, sadly the end. Damn it! But well, 11 kills! <laughs> oh well, I have a Yamane another Yak Knight. <laughs> this is. This is the Yak 9K, which has an even more ridiculous gun, the 45 mm NS45. But well, I don't need, I don't play the Yak 9 nearly as much, uh, the Yak 9K nearly as much as the Yak 9T. I don't think it's as good. The gun has one round less. It is more destructive, but it's more inaccurate, even at only two to three shots. But yeah, this thing certainly can be just. Um, just as big as a man as SDINT, let's see if I can get some more kills with that thing then. Might do a video about the Yaklan K as well. It's rather well, straightforward, my not that not too different from the Yaklan T. Just I feel it's just slightly worse in the armaments de department. Oh well. Ticket counter is going down. Come on, can I get this guy? E18. One hit and this this guy's dead. That's a 45 millimeter high explosive shell. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. 12 kills. Uh, P39 hat. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, can I make it 13? This is nah. No, don't like that. Don't like that. Ugh. Come on, evade. More. Oh, nah, I think I'm done for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shouldn't fly too high to the sun. <laughs> and well, mission accomplished. Twelve kills. Got the most kills of anyone in this match, I think. Uh, I certainly can't come on what can't complain. This was fun as hell. This this is why I love arcade. I mean, <laughs> come on, I want to see the results. <laughs> yeah, second the team, most kills. Hero pilot. <laughs> and the battle trophy. Come on, what's go what's gonna be? Uh, some extra money. Not that I need it. I do have enough of it. But again, ah. Oh. That was a blast. <laughs> what a match. So, we are here with the final presentation on the Yak-90 and for some reason um, the game just doesn't want to load uh, my skin. I don't know why. It has done that for a couple past days. Hmm. Anyways, we are here in a pretty standard uh, mid-tier battle. 
against the Germans, oh, uh, and the Americans, it seems. There's a P-51 involved. I don't... Oh, is this a down tier? I don't know. Well, anyways, let's see. This will be an interesting fight. We are some, against some of the toughest aircraft at this BR. There are B-109s involved, Focal for 90s So let's see what we are able to do here. P-51 first. Let's see, maybe he doesn't notice me. Just zoom climb up to try to catch him. One of the shot. Ah, bad aim. Nah. Damn it. Oh, he certainly has. Oh, he, not, not now he sees me. Uh, he, he's trying to energy trap me, but. Well, if you want to, to energy trap me, you should do it differently. Boom! Nailed him with the 50 caliber machine gun. Um, what, sh what he should have tried, because. From its conception, his maneuver was actually pretty good. He tried to energy trap me, but he should have uh, flown a slight spiral because that way I wouldn't have been able to line up the shot. Because as it was, I was just able to get the nose high enough to um, nail him with the 50 caliber machine gun. But yeah, could have, should have, didn't. I got to kill him. So yeah, a rather unconventional kill for the Yak 9. Usually is not really that good for these um, prop hanging maneuvers. Anyways, let's search for next targets. A couple of 190s down low. A BF 109. Let's see if we can make a dive on that. Oh no. Oh, there's another Focke 90. Let's see. Okay, tail is clear. Let's get this guy. We are at pretty high speeds. Taking the energy from that shallow dive with us. He is above us. Again, maybe we can zoom climb up and surprise him. He doesn't seem to notice us. Oh, yeah, he certainly doesn't. Boom, short bursts, and bam, aircraft destroyed. Second kill, easy as that. Fuck all for 90, down. Alright. And yeah, I realize I'm using the Yak-9 here um, rather unconventionally. I certainly use it for more, much more for uh, surprise attacks than extended dogfights. But again, if the situation allows it, this aircraft can certainly do it. But you can see here I'm trying to shed speed because I'm coming in too fast. Fire another short burst and boom! Kill number 3. I have to shot on the 4 from 90D, so this certainly is an up tier. Uh, we are at 5-0 because the D series from 90 d um, start at that BR. Let's see what he's. Oh, he's actually trying to dogfight me. Okay. Well, now he's playing right into my hands. This is what the Yak 9 is um, best at these low level dogfights. And I can, as you can see, I can easily dance around this guy with the careful use of uh, my throttle and a mix of vertical and horizontal maneuvers. And I'm easily on his tail now. Fire burst. Uh, only hit him to 50 cal. Trying to roll. But this is the Yak 9, and BAM! <laughs> There's kill number 4. And now I think it's only. Yeah, only the XP 50 left. And we do have team support, so I can play this more aggressively. Um, because the XP 50 is a very dangerous aircraft, I would usually play this more careful, but then again. We do have the team support. The XP-50 is a tough opponent. It has an insanely cl uh, good climb rate. It's surprisingly maneuverable and it is heavily armed with two 20 mils and two 50 cals. And he again tries to energy trap me and I follow it but I do have the team support so I can certainly risk it. As you can see I use my flaps just to stay uh, above a stall. And yeah just look, just look how quickly this thing just climbs away. Seems to have been hit by a 20mm shell, or by, by, certainly by something. The ITP just uh, nailed him with something, but he is still, well, perfectly able to fly. Just look at how these guys evades their shots. I mean, he that's some good flying, certainly. But now he's uh, played his chances. Boom! Set him on fire. Come on, before the Elfman steals the kill, and <laughs> boom! Dude, again, exploded! <laughs> uh, 
What a great final shot for a 5 kill ace match with the Yak 9T. Uh, whew. What a match! <laughs> Up tier with the Yak 9T, still managed an ace out of it. This really shows just how good this aircraft is. And just look at. Yeah, those are some decent results, I guess. I mean, it's, it's only a mid tier battle, but still, it's. This just shows why this aircraft is just so much fun to fly. <coughs> so then, and with that, we come to an end to this presentation, and what can I say? This machine is just... Uh, this machine brings back so many memories. It's such, it's such a nostalgic aircraft, because back in the day, Dwarf Thunder was a different game, and some would say it was a better one, I mean... I certainly had tons of fun back then, I still have tons of fun now, but the Yak 9T is one of these aircraft that is, it's an evergreen, it, it, it will never get old. This machine is immense fun, uh, I, I, I can't recommend it enough, uh, slap a talisman on this thing and just, just uh, go ham on it. This is an extremely fun aircraft, one of the best aircraft at its rank and uh, yeah, <laughs> I just I just am at a loss for words. Whether it's arcade or realistic, this thing can do it all. Certainly, certainly take this take this one out for a spin.